Hello and welcome back everybody. My name is Little Corn Dogs, and in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you about logic gates. Now, as you guys could probably see on screen, this is probably making no sense with these lines and colors and connected to a light bulb, but this is just a quick little example and I'm gonna get more into that later. But let's go ahead and get started. So um, as you guys can see right there, it has two inputs that turn on a light. This one could be either or. Uh, inputs that turn on a light and this one can only be one activation at a time to turn on a light. So that is an XOR gate, an OR gate, and an AND gate. But we're going to get into that a little bit later like I said. So we have triggers in this game or essentially sensors in this game. So I'm going to get more into that and if you guys want to follow along. So everything that is colored in here is what you want to focus on. So as you can see we have a compass there which is blue and that is wired to the light. So if we click here and we go to settings you can see it's connected to the light. Now you don't actually need these blocks on the floor or that like a red wire connecting it to have it actually work but it's just an example and hopefully it helps you guys understand that these two blocks are connected to each other so only focus on the things that are in the color in this video and uh, you should get a good understanding about how logic works but this essentially is how a sensor works and this sensor is a compass so as you can see there's a red spot there that seems to stay still um, now if we go and we click two and that green arrow turns on. So that arrow, once it enters into the red section there, it turns on the light. So it triggers the light. So um, don't focus on the hinge, just focus on the action really. So the arrow, once it enters that red section, it turns on. So in the game, you can turn on this or connect it to a sail and have it turn into the wind or turn into a direction that you want to go. Let's say you want to go west. So you set it to west and every time that your, uh, your ship starts steering off to the wrong direction, it will fix itself. So um, you can get really advanced with this stuff, but that is the compass. That is what that one does. And then we also have just have the regular angle sensor. So if we go right here, it's, it's just the same thing as the compass almost. It's just on a um, vertical kind of axis, like um, an angle. <laughs> so an angle axis, I guess. So as you can see, the blue is connected to the yellow, which the blue is a uh, angle sensor. And then the yellow is, of course, a light. So just telling you that it is turning on or it is putting an output out. So if we click one, once that arrow enters the blue or the ball enters the blue section, then it turns on the light. Now, with all of these kind of um, you know sensors, you can go to settings and you can change the width and you can do all that kind of cool stuff. So um, if you ever seen somebody in the game with something that is like auto stabilizing and it can never tilt, it just is always flying like a UFO, uh, they connect these to uh, helicopter engines and all these other stuff just to make their stuff you know fly pretty pretty stable so that is what a angle sensor does once you enter in that little section there um, at a certain angle then it activates an output so that's that one and then we got an altitude sensor an altitude sensor sounds exactly like what it is so we're a little bit above sea level right now um, it is about nine meters above sea level now the altitude sensor is connected to the light of course just like everything else in this example so when we click one and it reaches a certain altitude it activates the light so i'll do that again so we're below i think it's a set to 11 meters so once we are above 11 meters then it activates the light so you can actually check that out if we click on here and we go to settings altitude so it's at 11 once we surpass 10 feet which is 11 it turns on the light so you can actually connect this to a helicopter or an airplane or something like that and you can uh, have it turn off the thrusters essentially when you're over that height because you don't want to go so high or you can do it the opposite way where you don't want to be so low and you make it you know save itself before it crashes into the ground so that is the compass angle and the altitude sensor and of course everybody knows about a normal sensor we experience these every single day and that is either if you're going to the grocery store or any store when you walk up to that door that door is going to automatically open for you so that's exactly what this is so uh it's red connected to yellow which is just the sensor connected to the light and Again, don't focus on the pistons, just the colored stuff. Um, so once we get a certain distance from the ground, 
it's going to tell that light to turn on. So it's pretty simple. If all this stuff is a little bit confusing, um, you can go back and listen again, but um, it should be pretty easy for you to understand the concept of what each one of these does. And if not, that's totally fine because you're probably not gonna even use all of them in the beginning anyways. Um, but if you wanna get more advanced, you can definitely keep using this stuff or try to learn um, by just connecting it to some builds. But yeah, so this right here, just the normal sensor, when something gets obstructed or in its way, it puts an output out. So whether if that's opening a door or turning on a light, that's uh, that's what it does. So we're gonna get a little bit more confusing with this now. So this is actually, okay, so that's the sensor. Um, this is the AND gate. So we have a red and blue sensor that is connected to an AND gate. So red and blue connected to green, and the green is a AND gate, and then that is connected to a yellow light. So um, if we click one, you can see nothing happens. And you're like, that's weird. Usually when you connect a sensor to a light, it turns on, but it's not connected straight to the light, it's connected to the AND gate. So once we let that go, we're gonna be like, okay, let's try the sensor too, right? Maybe that'll work. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but if we click both, so, so an AND gate, so you need one and two inputs to create an action. So um, yeah, just like that. So it doesn't work with one, it only works with two inputs. Kind of simple, if not, then um, more, this is gonna get a little bit more confusing. Um, but this one's, it's a, little, it's a little tricky, but as you can see, none of them when they turn on are activating unless it's two. So it's kind of like teamwork for this, uh, for this AND gate here. So two um, need to work for an AND, so one and two inputs create a light, and then we have an OR gate, um, so an OR gate is the same. So we click, not the same, <laughs> it's similar, but uh, we click one and it turns on the light and you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then you click two and that also turns on the light. You're like, what the heck? The other one didn't do that. Well, this one is a lot better. I guess it's not the same, but it's, it's essentially the, my favorite one because you could do a lot with it. So uh, if you click one, it turns on the light and then if you click the other one, it turns on the light. And if you click two, then it also turns on the light. So any action, any input is going to make there be a circuit or make there be a loop or turn on a light or an action or anything like that. So um, like I said, yeah, any, any button that you connect to this gate is going to turn on uh, the light or open a door or spin a wheel or turn on a thruster, anything like that. So now this one is the one that people get a little tripped up on. It's a little bit hard for some people to understand, which is totally fine. Um, but again, I made this to have it be a little bit easier of an explanation. So as you can see, red is connected to the XOR gate and the blue is connected to the XOR gate and the XOR gate is connected to a light. So if we click one or red, then it turns it on. And then if we click blue or number two, then it also turns it on. And you're like, well, there's not really that much different about this uh, XOR gate then, right? Wrong. So instead of like a OR gate where it can be either OR of the colors that will turn on or sensors that will turn on the light, um, this one, when two are activated, it doesn't work. So um, two or more won't turn on this light. So um, if you click one, it will work. If you click two, it will work. Or if you click red or blue, it will work. But if you have two inputs happening at the same time, it will not activate the light. So that's it for uh, XOR gate, AND gate, and OR gate. That's, that's it. So um, if you did understand that, Thank you. I hope that I did a good explanation for that, but we are not done. I'm gonna show you what you guys can do with these blocks. So let's go ahead and get over there to the giant ship. Okay, we spawned in the X or uh, thing here. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> okay, so let's start building. Now, you guys are probably wondering, why are we here if you're just teaching me about logic? Well, I'm here because I'm teaching you what you can build with logic now. It's great that you know that all of those little blocks can have little simple actions, but what can you do with it? So that's what I'm gonna show you. So if we go here and we're just gonna build a frame out of the jet, just like so, and we go up. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen 
a like military jet it's like thrusters and how they work but the little back piece here on a military jet actually kind of like moves around directionally and you can choose that so they can kind of like turn like this instead of having to roll and do all that kind of fancy stuff um, or they can have both thrusters in the back be able to give them tilt and turning and uh, roll and all this different stuff so in this game that's extremely complex to put in i'm sure um, so they just have a basic thruster and it gives you more uh like freedom to kind of do whatever you want when it comes to making something in this game so you guys probably all make your jets like this. Maybe not exactly like this when it comes to um, like the pipe pieces and exactly what I'm using, but you probably use uh, hinges just like this on the side of the plane or under the plane and you connect it with a pipe piece just like that and then you get your wing and you connect it just like that. Now that works. That really, it does work. So uh, that's right, there we go. And so we have the roll just like that. And then of course you do it on the other side too, but you have the roll just like that. And that's how you roll in the game is by having a physical action of a wing in the front and give you that roll. That works, I'm not gonna lie. That works really good. But look at the aerodynamics on that. Look at the drag. Now, yeah, you could probably replace that with a more angled block, something like this, um, but I just don't like how there's a big gap between the plane and all that kind of stuff. So this is where the power of logic comes in. We can go ahead and turn off those aerodynamics. That's a little much, um, but this is where logic comes in and it really makes your builds really cool. So uh, we go ahead and go like that and then we'll do the same thing here and we will flip it like so. And then we'll go ahead and add a block right there. Now. Um, you can have just wings on the side of this if you'd like. Um, I like it to where there's actually thrusters on the back end. It just feels a lot more, how could I say this? It just feels like I can really pull on the, on the well, I guess they're not really pulling on the sticks in this game because we don't have sticks, but I'm really pressing on the keys and I can just do a crazy roll or a crazy up and down or anything like that. So um, with these, let's go ahead and program them to be S and W so that we have our up and down. So as you guys know, um, we can pull up just by going like that. Whoa, we hit a little block there. Okay, we don't have a vertical stabilizer, so of course we're just gonna spin like that. But as you guys can see, we can go up and down just like this, but that's not enough. We also need a roll, and I don't wanna put more hinges on the side, and I just don't like the look of that, right? I want it to feel and work like a real jet. Well, we can do that. So, uh, like I said, with the power of logic. So if we get an OR gate, and we go right there, and we get another OR gate, and we put it right there, now we're only gonna connect one of these at a time, so it's super simple. So we get the OR gate, go to settings, and then we connect it to the hinge. Now we do the same thing over here. So we go to settings and we connect it to the hinge. It's pretty simple. So the OR gate, or uh, I'm sorry, the hinge right here, we know that we have up and down functions, but we're gonna want that also, not only up and down, but we want the differential to be able to roll. And all of that is gonna be happening on the back end of this aircraft. So if we go here, we go to settings, we go to A and D, and then we go here and we do D and A. Um, then we also have roll like that. Isn't that so cool? Okay, so we have up and down. And then if we wanna roll, we can do that just like that. So it's, it's really cool. Uh, you know, once you learn how to do this kind of stuff, it's it really makes your builds on a whole new level and you really stand out when you're playing online with a bunch of other people and they're like, how's he doing that? I don't know how he's doing that, but that looks really cool. So um, we're like Iron Man, like you really have like independent legs really on the back end of this vehicle or aircraft, I guess I should say, where you have up and down and the roll. So let's get started. Let's get in the air. So we got this. Um, just like that. Oh, we're nose diving a little bit. Let's let's fix that really quick. Watch this. Watch this. You know how you fix it? It's pretty simple. We go right here, and for some reason, oh, not that thruster. Whoops. Sorry, dog. Just like that, and we go down. 
for some reason, when they're just that much lower, just like maybe half a block lower when you flip them, you're not, whoa, you're not like nose diving all the time. So anyways, we are extremely sensitive right now. Uh, when I pull up, we, we're we going up when we pull up. Um, but then we also have the roll. Like, look at how cool that looks on the back end of this aircraft, man. Like, it's crazy. So uh, I need to fix the, the controls here. They're extremely sensitive. But you know what? It's only two hinges that we have to worry about. So let's double click that. Settings. Um, let's do like a 15. There we go. Just like that. Okay. Uh, is that wrong? There we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and take off. So it shouldn't be as drastic uh looking when we take off there we go that was really quick but yeah see how nice that is see how nice and smooth that roll is and you don't have big gaps in between your wings and i mean honestly look at how tiny the wings are on this thing i mean the plane is way longer than the wings but yet this thing's flying phenomenally so let's go ahead and go down over this way i'll show you guys how good the control is on this guy so it's all from the tail. We don't have any other controls besides the tail. So the thrusters give us the roll and then they also give us, oh, whoops, I got stuck upside down there. <laughs> whoops. But like I said, we have extremely good control and that is the power of logic. It's super simple, but it's really as complex as you wanna make it. Um, I've seen people in the Steam Workshop make like TV screens. It's ridiculous. So um, I hope this video did help a little bit at least and give you a good example about how logic works. But if you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like and go ahead and check out everyone's stuff on the Steam Workshop just by typing in logic. Anyways, my name is Little Corn Dogs, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.